Recently, in my health journey, my MS journey, I've been investigating a lot of different options for me to do to treat myself more naturally. And ideally, I think I would like to work with functional medicine, integrative medicine, so that I can take advantage of the things that are working well in the medical system and also avoid the things that are not and work with more natural, basic things to help. So what I'm finding in that research is that you need to have really good discernment because there are a lot of people, many of them probably meaning well, who are trying to sell you a product. They're trying to sell you ideas and they're trying to sell you their system or their testing. And some of them have medical background, some of them don't. What I'm trying to do is glean the information. They will share some things, but other things they won't share because they want you to pay and sign up and all that kind of thing. And so a lot of times what I'm finding is that you can end up with uh, say you watch a, an hour-long video, you can piece together maybe like 10 minutes of good quality content and the rest is uh, testimonials and fluff, basically fluff. So things of like, you should love yourself more, just love yourself, you need to be loving of yourself, I don't know. Anyway, it's all fluff. We all love ourselves, we do, That's we're built that way, that's human nature, we love ourselves. In fact, we love ourselves way too much. And we sometimes love ourselves in a bad way, like someone who um, maybe is in pain and hurting emotionally, like you think of a young woman who starts cutting to deal with that. That's actually because she loves herself. It's a disordered way of loving herself, but she's trying to alleviate the emotional pain or distract at least from it with another kind of pain. So, which is it's really sad, tragic thing. Um, but it, that, that's an example, even in a negative, we do love ourselves way too much. And I think we need to get off that one. It's just, it's just not useful for anybody. Um, other things like, oh, you're so special, you deserve it and all that. You know what? I, I just really have no time for that kind of thing. What I want is I have decided to be a warrior, to fight these things, to look up these things, to spend countless hours researching and my husband's hard earned money on various things very, very cautiously because we don't have money. So we do it carefully. And ultimately, if I could eventually be well enough to start working, then, you know, then it pays off in the end for him. And it's just better for everyone if I'm not in really horrible shape. So, so that's what we're kind of trying to balance here. And I mean, my husband is really supportive, but it's, it's a challenge, right? So when I see these things, and I've even heard things like, you know, someone who's trying to sell their product and they're providing some useful information, but not enough that you could just go and, you know, do your own thing. You, you can just add it to the list of things that you're trying to understand better. But then they'll say, if you're really committed to this, you're willing to spend these thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in my system. And it's like, well, no, that's not how it works. I am absolutely committed to feeling better. But if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. And I can't just ask everybody I know to give me money to treat myself because you know, they've got their own lives and their own challenges too, right? So that, who does that? Like, I, I just could not do that. So that one doesn't really work for me either. And I think a lot of people have found that they've, they've sought their own treatments over time and that's been useful for them. So they're trying to share that information, but they're also trying to make a living. And I don't have any problem with that. I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm not judging them for that. Good for them. Like Matt Embry would be an example. I think he's doing amazing work and it's helped him. So that's fantastic. You know, that's a, that's a well-established system that is, is helpful for people. So generally, I mean, I don't know a huge, huge amount. I don't know all the details of his story, but I know enough to be encouraged by it and to recognize that he has found something that helps him and he's just hoping to help other people too and also make a living. So that's, that's great. I have no problem with that. Since recording this video, I have spent some more time looking more detailed into Matt Embry and how he does what he does and how he's doing so well. And I wanted to make a little correction here and that is that his charity, MS Hope, is not something that he makes money off of. It is a nonprofit. He does have his own full-time job making videos, making documentaries, which is great. He's very talented. So I just wanted to clarify that because he's, he's not making money off the system. He's actually offering all of this information for free to the general public, which I think is really fantastic. And I do wanna do another video about some pros and cons of what I found about Matt Embry and his program. Um, another problem that I've noticed is that, like recently, there was a a group, it was a, a social media group, and also 
this, this group of um, people who are in that field who are in various ways providing services to help people with their MS and um, I, I watched a lot of the videos they were putting out and I didn't get to see all of them because it was kind of set up in a weird way where you couldn't I couldn't just get access to them all but what I could see I would have to say again you're, you're looking at maybe 90% fluff and maybe if you piece through it all and spend all those hours watching that you get maybe 10% helpful information and it, at this point, you know, where am I going? I might as well sit and watch it and, you know, run through it and see what I can find. But one thing that I find is really concerning, the fluff includes a lot of new age occult practices, some of them overtly occult and to varying degrees. And as a Christian, I've had to learn about a lot of this stuff over the years. So this isn't like a new thing where I'm getting scared or whatever. No, this is when you're dealing with the spiritual realm as part of your treatment, you are dealing with the demonic. The spiritual realm is the demonic. You have God and his angels, and you don't have control over them. You don't access them. If you're a Christian, you're born again. You know the Lord. You pray to him. You trust him. That's a wonderful relationship. Highly recommend reconciliation with your creator. But when you are just generally trying to tap into the spiritual world in the occult, that's what it is. It's the occult. It's demons. They may look great. They may give you some good advice because all lies are gonna be mixed with just enough truth to kind of pull you in. And one example of that that is very, very popular and I'm just seeing so many people recommending and that's the medical medium. And the word medium really does mean, this isn't me just kind of going, oh, that must be what that means. It, he actually admits, this is, this is his thing that he's selling, that he talks to the spirit realm. He gets his information from them and that is extremely dangerous and it's not worth it. On a practical level, it might seem like it, but it's not. In the end, it will not be worth it for you, I promise you. And I'm not saying I'm against celery or celery juice, that's great, I love celery. I include it in my diet regularly. You know, the, that, that's one of those things where it's probably like, you know, helpful information, but it's mixed in with so many other things that you just don't wanna be messing with. And sadly, in that group that I was in, uh, the social media group, Someone was, people were starting to talk about the medical medium because I think he was recommended in one of the videos by one of the, the practitioners or someone who had, was treating her, his or her own MS with it anyway. Um, and I tried very gently without being rude or anything like that to explain, you know, he is talking to demons. And I got banned and blocked from that group very quickly for doing that because I guess it wasn't positive enough. So fine, you know, it's not my group. I don't really care and I don't need to be in there. It's, it's not a big deal, but you know, it's kind of sad to see that they're, they're so desperate to hang on to these things that if anybody uses discernment, then it's like a negative thing. And uh, that's so wrong. It's so backwards because when you're buying a lie, that's not a positive thing. That's a negative thing. It sounds negative when somebody is warning you but ultimately it's a good loving thing to hear that to for someone to do that because it's i want you to be in the truth i want you to have proper care i don't want you to be dabbling with demons this is not okay and it is real the demonic is very real talk to anybody who has dabbled in the occult outward you know playing with occult practices witchcraft all those sorts of things they will tell you it is very real and i thankfully i haven't but i know people who have and i it's, it's just, it's devastating. It will destroy your life to get involved in that stuff. And I know for most people with chronic, chronic illness, they just wanna dabble with it a bit just because there's practical reasons why maybe some things are helping them feel better. And I understand that. I understand the temptation towards that, but I still don't recommend it. I think that's just buying into something that will ultimately harm you. And it might end up that it's years down the road or the rest of eternity after you die but ultimately it's still not, it's not okay. It's not a good thing for you to be doing. And there are other areas that are, they're just saturated with this stuff like yoga and Reiki and mindfulness meditation and you know, all these grounding, I'm sorry, grounding is just another one. It's just fluff, it's not useful and it's not good for you. I'm not saying you don't go walk in the grass on your bare feet, go for it, that's great. But it's, that's all it is, it's just nice. You know, going out for a walk in nature is wonderful. It's a great idea. I, I recommend it. I love it. And I do find it. It, it. it does make you feel good. It helps your soul. You know, it makes you feel like you're connecting. You know, you're seeing the things that really matter in the world. You're, you're getting outside of computers and phones and, and all the stress of life and everything. So, so that's great. Go for a walk. Do it whenever you can, if you can, or if you're in a wheelchair. Just get out in nature and enjoy it as best you can. 
so that, that stuff is all great, but it's wrapped up in these ideas that it's it's going to be this spiritual healing and that kind of thing. And that's that's not how the true healer, who is God, the creator, that's not how he heals people. He doesn't use demons to heal people. Does he heal today? Yes. But does he heal all the time today? No, because it's ultimately his plan and we don't see the grand plan. We don't know all the details of why certain things happen the way they do, what things we have to learn, what things he's going to use in all sorts of different ways that we just don't know. So, and I get the suffering thing because I have yeah, been suffering so much. So I understand how hard that is, but because I know my creator and I trust him, I can hang on to that. I can hang on to him. I trust him. And I know that there's so much more to this than just me suffering with physical issues or emotional issues, stress, all those kinds of things. Those are all real things. He's got a purpose in that and I trust him in that. So if you don't want to trust anymore in the occult or things that are wrapped deeply up in the occult, you know, I just highly recommend turning from your sins, the things that you do. You live in rebellion against God and that's what we do. That's our default because we were born in sin. You turn from that sin, you turn to Christ, cry out to him and pray for him to give you that repentance, that, that desire to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus because he is, he's the great mediator between God and man. He's the one who saves. He's the one who died and conquered death and rose again for mankind. So I just highly, highly recommend that. Now, does that mean if you turn to Christ for healing that, that that'll that work, you know, no, because that's not even the right thing, because that means that you're just trying to turn to Jesus for what he can give you. And if you're trying to get something from him, other than just turning to him, the wonder that is Jesus, then you're not even, that's not even true salvation. That's just, it's understandable, you know, we want to get things, we want to receive healing and, you know, we want, what, more money, more things, whatever, you know, these things are not, they're not why you turn to Jesus ever. And ultimately, I know some of you probably will still look to the medical medium or other, many other of these people out there offering their services because some of the stuff they say sounds good and probably is very helpful. And that's why I am still looking into their stuff, even though I have to wade through all the garbage to get to the good stuff. But I do recommend just using discernment. You know, you don't need to buy into all that stuff. You don't need to go to Reiki. You don't need to do mindfulness meditation, which is actually mindlessness meditation. You don't need to do any of that. What you need is Christ, and Christ gives us discernment. Those of us who are in him, we can use our discernment, and I have to use it a lot in so many different ways, in religious issues and, you know, in, in life. Discernment is super important, and it's not highly recommended in our society anymore, sadly, but it is really, really, really important. We need it. We need to be paying close attention and weighing things out logically and not just emoting all the time because that's not going to answer any questions for you, and it's not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to make you miserable and ultimately hurt the people around you as well. So, so that's my, uh, my feedback on some of these things. I'm still gonna continue to uh, dig into the research and even people that have a lot of this kind of junk, this fluff that they've got all sort of wrapped up in it. it sounds all pretty positivity and all these kinds of things. Um, you know, that's, it's annoying, but I'm at this point willing to tolerate it for a while longer in order to get the nuggets of the good stuff. But if you can't tell the difference between those, maybe walk away from that completely and just move into something just a lot more scientific, you know? And I want, I want to just add one more note that one of the things they often recommend, and I've seen so many people recommend, and not even just for chronic illness, but for any variety of things, mental illness, anything, um, is to get rid of all the toxic people in your life. Well, I've got news for you. Everybody, every human being on this earth right now is toxic to some degree. We all, we're all sinners. So we are going to, even the sweetest people have their selfish ways. They have things that they do to hurt people. It's, it's just how we are as sinners right now. And ultimately there are times like when you've got new friends online or something like that and they start becoming a real problem, then yeah, okay, you don't need that. Um, but when it comes to like family members, people that you're close to and they have some really manipulative ways about them or, you know, there's just a number of different things that would qualify as toxic these days. If you, those people are in your life, for they're there for a reason. You might need to set boundaries. There's ways that you can handle the stress from that better than others. 
but I don't generally think it's a good idea to just cut people out because they're toxic because then you can basically use that excuse to cut anybody out who's just giving you a hard time one day. And, and it, I know it's usually more than that, but it's still, just imagine if everybody looked at you and cut you out of their lives because you're the toxic one, you know, because you are, I am, we all are. And what we need to do is have patience and hold each other accountable, but also offer forgiveness, especially when someone comes to you and, and says, I'm sorry, that was wrong. I shouldn't do that. I won't do it again. Then great. You need to keep welcome, welcoming them back, not just telling them I'm done with you. But like I said, establish good boundaries when you need them. But I don't recommend cutting out people and calling them toxic. That's very rarely is that really the best way to go. It's used for so much more. If someone's like physically abusing you or something, yeah, of course, you have to get away from that person. But when you just look around and say, I don't like how that person is, I don't like their manipulations or whatever it might be, their narcissism, you have to get a thicker skin, I think, you know, I think it's a really good idea. Learn how to handle your own stress better and set those boundaries, do things that you need to do to deal with it. But, you know, have some compassion too, because you're not the center of the universe. They, they may need you to help them. And again, I'm not recommending that you get into this codependent relationship or something, but they may need you to be the one who gives them the hard news, holds them accountable. And if they don't like that, then maybe they leave. I don't know. But ultimately, we, we need to try a lot harder to work at our relationships. That's what I'm seeing. And yes, that's hard, especially when you're struggling with chronic illness. I get it, trust me. But it's worth doing because people matter. So that's my feedback on using discernment and everything going on in the holistic medical industry, some of which is great, some of which is really not great, in fact, quite damaging. And I encourage you to use more discernment and spend more time looking into these things and find out what is the real thing and what is the, the counterfeit. And take the good and leave the bad. Thank you for watching and God bless.